every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you go over here, that is the Ord-Oracle.com. And uh, it's fantastic. We love having Tim come on. Additionally, on TFNN.com, if you go to the services tab, uh, we have two fantastic uh, webinars from Tim Ord. Those are the secret science of market tops and six ratios every trader should know. And, uh, you know, when we had Tim on last time, it was really interesting. We were talking about the SPY, what he could see if there is a potential sell-off depending on the news. Well, that news is passed now, and we have uh, some fresh stuff to uh, analyze with him as well. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. So kind of going through a learning curve here, trying to get this Skype thing going. Oh, that's but. totally fine. That's totally all right. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, for everyone who didn't know, we changed offices and we're kind of restructuring how we do some of our operations, but it is is good and it's going to get even better. So, Tim, thanks for being patient with us on that. Well, I know it's, it's on my part. So, but anyhow, um, I think you can see my screen. I assume you can. The what the trend, 10 day trend close. That would, um, that yeah. Would yeah, just repeat that again. So what's yeah. the question? Basically, he was saying uh, he had a 5.52 at the low, making the two-day 0.76 and the 10-day 0.97. Of course, he has that caveat, I believe. It was similar to his panic bottoms. Is his reading of these numbers akin to a panic blow-off top? No, uh, okay. this is not a blow-off of top. It's, it's just actually right now the trend's not giving a lot of information. It's, it's not in a range from... Uh, below 0.9 or above 1.2, so it's not really signaling anything right now. Okay. So put it this way, it's not helpful. So you got to look at other indicators that uh, do give some signs of what the market's trying to do here. And so, since right now it's it's not giving information, let's look at chart one. Yep. That I have up. Uh, uh, so are we looking at the SPY here? Yes. All right. Uh, so we had a new all-time high on the SPY, and the what's Giving the best information right now is actually two things. We're up seven days in a row going into, I think it was last Friday. A lot of times you're up seven days in a row. The market makes a higher high within usually five days. Well, today is day number four, I think. And so everything's actually still okay here. Uh, the pink areas I have uh, listed on the chart, you know, then I have 10 days uh, back in May of, of this year. We're up 10 days in a row. Market went sideways for about two weeks. Again, it went up seven days in a row. Market went sideways for approximately two weeks. Uh, in July, the market went up for seven days in a row. Three days later, made a high, or four days later, made a higher high. That turned out to be a top. Uh, then we up up, day, up eight days in a row in August. Market went sideways for a week or so, hit a new high, then came down, and we're up seven days in a row uh, going into I think it was Friday, and the market made a higher high uh, today. So nothing's really changed. I'm still expecting at a minimum we'll go sideways. I still think we're going to pull back. The reason why, if you look on the bottom window, is the SPX VIX ratio. Um, if you notice, uh, well, the S&P's had a higher high, in other words, but this ratio is making a lower high. And so, and actually even right now, uh, over the last couple, actually over the last three days or four days, uh, that ratio has not made a higher high than the previous high we had three to four days ago, even though the SPs are up over uh, close to 2%. So I still think we're having a pullback here and a pullback to the uh, back to that 540 area. So everything, uh, you know, everybody's, in other words, we had an FOMC meeting yesterday that lower, lowered the interest rates by half a point. And okay, now the market rallies on that. Uh, right. Market actually rallied last week in anticipation of that, and this is kind of a continuation. But the internal statistics, according to the uh, VIX uh, S or SPY VIX ratio, nothing's really changed. So I'm thinking this is probably is going to be a trap. Uh, this is not a good idea in our, in my opinion, to chase the rally. Let's, we'll flip to chart two here real quick. Absolutely, yeah. And 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 this is. Uh, a bigger time frame. You can see this chart goes back to uh, almost two years. And if you look back in uh, January, this period right here, this blue area, uh, the S&Ps were making about the same high, and that ratio is making higher highs. That's a continuation. It's going to market's going to go higher. And back in the late last year, uh, the market had a correction when 
pretty much matched its previous high that Rachel made a higher high. Then back in early this year, back in looks like about May or so, we made uh, about the same high that Rachel made a higher high. Now we have a distinct uh, divergence here. You can really see this is a weekly chart. And the S&P obviously has made higher highs, and this ratio just plummeted. So that's really a warning sign that you really shouldn't chase this. Uh, you know, not all kind of indicators work all the time, but this is too of a glaring of a divergence, especially with the market really breaking to new highs t uh, today. And the weekly charts are really giving a bigger divergence here. Um, if we go back and look in history, see what happens. Uh, this goes back to 2018. And kind of it just reinforces the idea that, you know, you can see the SPs, which is this window right here, is making higher highs. This ratio is making lower highs. You get a top. Same thing happens here. Ratio or SPs make a higher high. Ratio makes a lower high. Same thing happens, goes on, repeats. Nothing really changes here. Uh, the SPs are, are not quite making a new high. The ratio is making a higher. So basically, what I'm saying is the SPX VIX ratio. Uh, kind of leads does lead uh, the SPX. So mm -hmm. we're also in a kind of a bearish uh, seasonality period. This bearish seasonality period actually started yesterday, and it's, it doesn't you know seasonality doesn't you know okay today seasonality is bearish. The market go up a couple three days or down a couple three days. It doesn't really it kind of it gets you in the vicinity of the highs or lows. Uh, right now, uh, this uh, seasonality is bearish all the way into first part of October. So when does it start? You know, maybe it starts today, maybe it starts tomorrow. But we're in a region that it's not the time to be extremely bullish here. Fantastic. So. Tim, stay right there. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ward of the Ord Or. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Of course, we are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Before we went to the break, we're talking about the SPX, particular things uh, to watch out for, especially after this uh, this thing ripping up after the Fed meeting. Uh, Tim, yeah, please continue. All right. Uh, so anyhow, so the SPX, yeah, the VIX is giving a, a bearish sign here. It, it should be going down or it actually should be going down. This ratio should be going up. If, when the SPs hit new highs, this ratio should hit new highs. And that's not that's what's happening here. So I think the consolidation that started back in July is still ongoing. And uh, so let's look at a seminar indicator. Uh, this is the uh, equity put call ratio readings. And the top, top window is the SPX. Uh, it kind of just... I really don't use it that much unless it says something. The 20, the bottom window is the 10 day average of the equity put call ratio reading. And the next window up is the uh, five day. The 10, or the 10 day is not saying much, uh, but the five day is. Uh, five days, obviously, is only a week of, of, of uh, data, but it does give uh, kind of a, a sign short term that you probably it's not a good idea to chase this rally. Uh, this chart goes back approximately about a year, year and a half. And I marked the times when this ratio hit 0.55 or lower. And that's actually what it is today is 0.55. So we're up against uh, a ratio. The previous three times, uh, it marked at least a short-term high. And uh, back in 2023, it, it, it kind of both times stalled the market. So this ratio, or the equity put call ratio, uh, uh, suggests that uh, sentiment is not right for the continuation of the rally along with the VIX. So, um, you know, everybody's kind of worried here that they're missing a market, that the market's going to keep rallying. And it could. Uh, you know, I've been wrong before, but uh, when you get this much information, I'm not chasing it. I'll put it that way. Right. Uh, so we'll see how that wor works out. We'll probably know in the next couple of days, but uh, the signs are not good that this rally, especially seasonality, is not good here either to chase this rally. So you got cement seasonality and the VIX saying that it was probably not a good idea. So that's my take on here. I still think a pullback um, is forthcoming here. Uh, I do think year end there's still a big rally coming, new highs, higher than where we are right now. But I think we'll still have a pullback first before those uh, um, 
next rally begins. So I still think we're, st we're stuck and we're mired in a trading range. I see. Let's flip the gold market and see what's going on. Absolutely. There. All right. This is uh, GDX, and it's a really good momentum indicator. It kind of tells you where you are in the market. And all this light green area uh, are times when this indicator is above zero, which is the bottom window. You see it. You know, all the time, and I kind of pay attention to it to see how the rally is going, if it's gaining strength or losing strength. But the bottom window is a 50-day average of the GDX up-down volume percent. And when it's above zero, the uptrend's intact, and that's all these light green areas. And it's been up, uh, been above zero since basically first part of April or end of March, and it's pretty much just staying there. And it's staying at actually a relatively high level, coming in around plus eight right now. And uh, what we're doing on a GDX, if you go to the top window here, you're uh, up against uh, the previous highs of uh, this high right here, which is, looks like about January of 2022. And we're up against that high. And with the ratios, uh, with this uh, up-down volume staying high, uh, even though we're kind of hesitating around here, I think we got enough uh, energy, according to my work, uh, even on a bigger time frame, so that this is probably going to eat through this high and keep on going. I noticed uh, I labeled the head and shoulders bottom uh, previously on this, and had this head and shoulders bottom as an uptight tar target around 45. You know, we're in the 40 range right now, and we're not backing away from this high. That's usually a good sign. You're up against it. It, it, it tested once here a few weeks ago. It's back up against testing that again. Uh, the ratios are, or the up-down volumes holding well above uh, zero. So I'm thinking ultimately we're just going to eat through that resistance. So um, our short-term basis here, I don't see any top of any consequence other than some minor consolidations. And I, I'm thinking we're probably seasonality actually turns uh, bullish here, runs actually there's a couple of weeks before the year's out that do lean bearish. But majority of the weeks are up all the way into year end. So in general, I think this rally is probably going to continue into year end. And what starts in January, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, it looks good uh, so far. Here's uh, the weekly charts. Uh, this gave a buy signal back in March of 2000 of this year, 2024. Uh, it shows momentum of the up-down volume advanced client indicators. Uh, this was the up-down volume one. And this is a advanced decline. It's it's making higher highs as a, as the S as the GDX is making higher highs. Previous signals of this type lasted a minimum of one and a half years. Some as uh, long as uh, four years. One back in here. Uh, this is a weekly chart. Uh, it's not even near anywhere close to a sell signal. Uh, so trends up. Take a look at the monthlies. Monthlies are same thing. Uh, this gave a buy signal in June 1st of this year. The buy signals of this type last one and a half to three years. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the weeklies, monthlies, no divergence, uh, making higher highs, both indicators, which is uh, the bottom window is the uh, up-down volume. The next higher window is advanced decline. Um, so it's all clear. There's no really divergence showing up, uh, year, mid-term, long-term, or even a short-term. Other than I don't try to pick out the daily highs and lows of GDX. I, I get in a trend and kind of stay with it. But uh, even the bullish percent index, which I don't have it shown here, is up around 85%. In other words, 85% of the stocks in gold miners index are on point and figure buy signals. And it's been staying there since June. Uh, so what's that saying is there's the stocks that are on buy signals are staying on buy signals. And, uh, and I'm starting to see some of these lower price issues are starting to flip to buy signals on the monthly charts. So I think uh, the best part of uh, the gold issues are still in front of us. So <coughs> yeah. give me a drink here. So anyhow, I don't, I don't see any short, other than a minor consolidation that may last a week or two, I don't see any big danger in front of us on the gold issues. Fantastic. So, well, Tim, let them know where they can find you. Is ord-oracle.com the best place for uh, them to yep. find you? Fantastic. Yep. That's my uh, uh, Tim at 
ord-oracle.com is my email. So if you want to email me, that'd be great there. But uh, otherwise, you can find me uh, on my website. So uh, Fantastic. And Tim, of course, we enjoy when you come on every Tuesday and Thursday. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about what Tim does and how he approaches all this, of course, you can go to tfnn.com. And we have two of his fantastic webinars up there. Of course, that's the secret science of market tops and six ratios every trader should know. Tim, thank you uh, so much for coming back on. We're going to see you Tuesday, all right? Sounds good. Thank fantastic. You. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back to wrap up the show.